Now, one of the things that you gotta take a look at when you're 3D printing is infill. There are all types of different infill. And what I really wanna do is test and see which one uses the least amount of material per weight. Cause that's gonna be one of the ways that we can kind of tell what's going on here. So you see there's tons and tons of different types of infill along with bottom and top layers, all kinds of fun stuff. What we're gonna do is we're gonna design a block that we can test infill with inside of Onshape. Then we'll bring that STL file into Bamboo Lab or Worker or whatever. We'll change different properties and see exactly what's going on. So here's a basic block. It's solid because we can change the amount of infill that happens and remove the top layers and all that stuff. It's an inch by an inch, and then it also is going to be three quarters of an inch tall. So not anything big deal, but it's going to give us a baseline for getting it set up. Inside of Bamboo Studio, I've added 17 of these blocks, and that represents each of the different types of infill that's available inside of Onshape. What I've done is I've set it so that it has no top layers, and then I've just kind of left everything else default as is with a 15% infill spacing. What we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna go over into objects. This is for all of the pieces on the plate. That's not what we want. We wanna control each one of these blocks we need to have different infill for. So we're gonna go over to objects, and then once we're in there, we can click on the object, and then we can say in our strength area here that we're just gonna go through and take a look at the grid. Well, I'm gonna start off at the top and just kind of move our way down. So our first one's gonna be concentric. Then this one is going to be rectilinear and we'll move through the list and get that all done. All right, so now we've gone through and uh, have all of those there. It's not maybe the lowest logical layout, but it'll be fine for what we're doing here. So I'm just gonna select them all, I hit auto arrange just to get them into the most useful spot possible, I guess. Uh, and cool, it's there. So now we're gonna slice it and we're gonna be able to look and see the infill of what it's gonna look like ahead of time. And then we'll be able to really dive into the numbers a little bit later here. So I'll slice that plate up and you can see there are all kinds of different infills that are gonna pop their way up here. Uh, and what's really fun about this is we can dive our way through the layers so you can see how they will change over time. Uh, for instance, all the first layers are fine, and then you're gonna see that they fill in, especially the adaptive ones where they grow and change. Uh, you get a lot of different looks here depending on what's going on. So we're gonna go through and print this out and see exactly what they look like, what they weigh at the end, and I'm not gonna worry about anything related to how heavy they're gonna be or anything like that, but we'll see exactly what's going on. And I'm really interested to see this one right here where it kind of builds up from the bottom but uses very little towards that end. So let's go ahead and slice it up and see what happens. Concentric looks really cool. I don't know how much weight it has or how much strength it has, but it looks pretty neat. When we move over to rectilinear, this looks strong and it feels strong. When you just pick it up, it feels like a strong piece. Grid, similar take, feels very strong and looks very nice. Line is interesting. It's like the grid, but just kind of offset. I think this would actually be stronger because of that. Cubic also feels very strong and kind of goes with the theme of what we've been having here. Triangles and the next one, I had trouble telling apart because they look very similar to each other. If you look at this and the trihexagon versus the triangle, they look the same. Gyroid's one of my favorites because it's just so distinctive and looks super, super cool. Honeycomb is the best because hexagon is the best to gone. And then we have Adaptive Cubic, which looks very much like some of the ones later on. Aligned Rectilinear doesn't strike me as something that's strong unless you need it in a particular direction, but it looks nice. 3D Honeycomb looks amazing. It just, I could look at this all day. Hilbert Curve, I have no idea what's going on here. I don't think this is going to be very strong, and I don't get it. Same with the Archimedean Curve. Again, it looks cool, but I don't think functionally it's going to be there. And Octogram Spiral, same thing. There's stuff that just doesn't make sense. Support Cubic looks like the other Cubic from before, and I couldn't honestly tell them apart. Lightning is a hot mess, but it's super fast. And then we have Crosshatch, which looks beautiful and feels very, very strong when you pick it up. So what conclusions can we actually draw from this? I think there's only really three things that we can pull out of this. Number one, if you're looking to save filament and just make something sort of quick, but using the least amount of filament possible, Lightning is your thing. Basically, it starts from the bottom and builds its way up, uh, and that's gonna save you filament because you don't have to deal with filling in the bottom area. The bottom layers are gonna be pretty strong already, so putting that out as is, is gonna help you out. The next conclusion that we can do is time. If you're looking to save time, any of the cubics, that's adaptive cubic or support cubic, are gonna save you a ton of time compared to something like the octogram spiral, which is gonna be essentially a whole minute longer in the print. And these are really tiny prints. 
The final thing that we can draw out of this is what they look like. And if you have exposed infill, that's great. You can kind of choose what you want. But for a lot of things that I print and a lot of things I'm looking at, I don't have that concern. I'm looking for something that's strong and prints pretty well. And really I'm looking at the supporter adaptive cubic in that realm. I'm looking for cubic or grid or even gyroid. It just really depends on how fast I want to go and what strength I'm looking for. I'm going to have to do some more tests with this, uh, but it's really fun to kind of print them out and see what they all look like just to kind of get an idea of, of what's what. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.